What if you could add explosions, impacts, and physics to your characters? You know in Grand Theft Auto when your character is hit by a car and they bounce and collide with real weight and physics? That's ragdoll physics, and we can do the same thing in Unreal Engine. But instead of animating everything from scratch, the easy way is to simulate this so you can get instant results without dropping any keyframes yourself. So in this video, I'll show you the easy five-step framework to set up your own ragdoll physics for animations and cinematics in Unreal Engine 5 without animating anything yourself. What's up, my name's Josh Tunin, and for the last nine years, I've worked in Hollywood visual effects and movies like Star Wars 9 and Across the Spider-Verse. And now I make my own animated films in Unreal 5. By the way, this video is from Unreal Fundamentals, my course that'll take anyone from a complete beginner to making your own action scenes and mastering filmmaking in Unreal 5. It's on sale right now at unrealforvfx.com slash fundamentals. Let's jump into the video. So let's walk through each step to set up an explosion just like this inside of Unreal. The first step is we need to import and set up our characters. Now we've already imported Master Chief for this example, but just to show you the process, all you need to do is find a .fbx or .obj file and simply drag it into your content browser. And then just press import all, and this will automatically generate three different character assets. If I double click on the pink skeletal mesh asset right here, this is the home page for your characters, where you can set up the default material materials and see the rig attached to your character. And we can preview our bones and rig right here and see how our character is set up. But instead of looking at the pink skeletal mesh menu, let's go to the very top right under this yellow physics asset menu. Here we can see our physics asset. Now to get a quick preview of our simulation, first just go to this character dropdown and under rigid bodies or this bodies menu right here, make sure that body drawing is set to none while we simulate. With that set up correctly, now just click on these two right arrows, just press simulate. And now gravity is enabled and Kratos will flip flop onto the ground. But you can tell right away that the knees and arms aren't set up correctly. They're bending left and right and not in a realistic way. Now we can end this simulation at any time by clicking on that same button right there. So let me show you the quick way to adjust and improve your characters in the physics asset menu. There's only two different things you need to know to adjust this simulation. We have these purple rigid bodies, which are the colliders and collisions of our character and they're attached to our rig through constraints, which you can see are attached to each bone right here. On the bottom left, we have this physics graph and it makes it really easy to click on the constraint or rigid body attached to any object. I'm gonna press on the F key to zoom in really close to this constraint right here. And you can see exactly how far this constraint is able to move left and right. In the details panel on the right here, I'm gonna scroll all the way down until I can find my angular limits. Right here, our swing and our twist motions will determine how far this constraint will move and you can see it update right here in your viewport. Now our twist limit shows how far our neck can twist left and right. And if you think about it with your own head, it can only twist about 10 to 20 degrees left or right. You'll also notice that the orientation of this constraint is a little bit off. So I'm gonna enable rotation snapping, and now I can rotate this 90 degrees upwards and 90 degrees forwards. And now this constraint will make a little more sense, where our twist limit will stay in between these green bounds. Then we can do the same thing for our swing one and our swing two limits. And if you wanna play this safe, I try to keep these numbers as low as possible to start. Now what we need to do next is go through our entire rig and adjust each constraint so that we set realistic limits to the rotation of each constraint. Let's zoom in on our knee by pressing the F key, and then we can select this constraint by finding it in this physics graph right here. And now let's do the same thing. In this case, let's rotate this down 90 degrees and forwards 90 degrees. Now, if you think about your knee, it's not gonna twist much left or right. So we can set our twist limit to something really low, like a value of five. Let's make sure our swing limits make sense too. I'll lower our swing two limit down to a value of 10 and set this swing one limit a bit lower. And then let's rotate this backwards. The reason why is that your knee doesn't rotate forward. It really only rotates backwards. We can do the same thing for the other knee as well. And when first moving these into place, I'd keep them at 90 degree increments so that you can easily make sense of each constraint. So we'll set our twist limit to a value of five, our swing two limit to a value of 10, and our swing one limit to a value of 20. And swing it back about 40 degrees. Now to see if this worked, let's just go back and simulate one more time. 
and we can see our physics update right here in the viewport. There's still some problems, but at least now our knees aren't buckling forwards or backwards. So all you need to do is go through the rest of the rig and adjust each constraint and limit the angular motion. But then the next step is we need to adjust these purple rigid bodies. Now the easy way is just to press the R key and we can start scaling these down so they're a lot smaller and more contained to our object. Now by default, most of these will be a little bit too big and they're not always perfectly oriented to your character. So if you ever want to adjust these, just click on the one you want to update and then scroll to the bottom and under body setup, you'll see this primitives drop down. And under here, you'll see the transform settings for each capsule. Now we can adjust the radius, which is the scale or the length. Plus we can adjust this rotation so it's more squared off. So in this case, I'll set the X and Z to negative 90. And now we can see it's squared off and connects to our rig. So again, all we need to do is go through the same process for each one of our rigid bodies. By the end, your rigid bodies should look something like this. Each purple bounding box is still inside of our character. And so this is the final setup I got with Master Chief. So with everything set up correctly, I can go to simulate this and I should get a somewhat realistic result. Another thing you should know is that you can shift and right click to apply physics forces to your characters and see if it's reacting as intended. Then with your physics asset set up, we're ready to start animating our characters. Well, if you wanna create animations for visual effects or filmmaking, it all starts with a level sequence. So just right click in your viewport and create a brand new level sequence right here. I've gone ahead and added Master Chief into this example and applied a simple run animation. But how can we start simulating physics in the middle of our animation? Well, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Just select your character and in the details panel, scroll down until you see the physics menu inside of the details. Right here, you'll see simulate physics. Now we want this off at the start of our animation, but you can see this keyframe is available on the right side and we can actually keyframe the physics simulation and enable it at any time. So on frame 32, let's set a keyframe and then step forward one frame and then enable simulate physics. And you can press that keyframe button to make sure it sticks. If I zoom in in our sequencer timeline, you should see that simulate physics starts off and then turns on partway through. So now if we wanna preview our simulation, if I just scrub back and forth here inside a sequencer, you'll notice that nothing is simulated and those keyframes aren't doing anything just yet. So if you actually wanna see your simulation right here in the viewport, we need to play our game. So to do that, just click on these three little dots in our play options and press simulate. Now, as long as we're starting with simulate physics turned off, when I go to press play, as soon as that option is enabled, we can see our physics turn on dynamically in the middle of this animation. Now let's stop this simulation for now. And if you wanna make this a little bit easier, a really great trick is let's find our sequencer asset right here and drag it into our 3D scene. You should see this clapperboard icon right here in your viewport. And the only thing we need to do is turn on autoplay. Now, when we press simulate, our sequencer will automatically play. So we don't need to worry about scrubbing back and forth or anything like that. So now we've got a great start where our character is simulating in the middle. It would be awesome for a bullet impact, but let's add in an explosion and have Master Chief fly into the air. To do this, we need another physics object to interact with Master Chief. Let's go to our quick add actors menu and add in a basic sphere right here. Now it's important to know with this sphere that we don't wanna simulate physics because if we do that, when I press play, the sphere will just fall to the ground. So let's make sure simulate physics is disabled for now. Now if I press simulate, we'll see Master Chief run and his physics simulation start, but now this ball will interact and move Master Chief around left and right, which is exactly what we want. But instead of manually moving the sphere left and right, all we need to do is scale our object and start small and explode it out bigger into this shape here. We know that our physics simulation starts on frame 32, so let's create some scale keyframes for our sphere. I'm gonna add in a new transform track and I'll expand this so I can make a scale keyframe and we'll scale this bigger up until frame 35. And then I'll click and drag over both of these and press the four key to turn them into linear keyframes, which will make them move a little bit faster. Now let's just make sure that this sphere is lined up correctly and is close to our character. So I'm gonna preview our animation here and to see it simulating in the viewport, let's press the play button. And now we can see that explosion starting off and knocking Master Chief off into the left. Now, if I wanted to add more energy and do the explosion, I just need to make sure those keyframes are closer together, which means they would move faster. So with our keyframes close, let's press play one more time. And now we'll get even more speed and energy. 
Now on the left side here, I added a few extra blue blocks that have simulation enabled. And you'll notice, as Master Chief gets knocked into this group of blocks, they'll fall left and right because they're also actively simulating. Now, we can't have this giant sphere in our final animation, so all we need to do is apply an invisible material to this sphere to hide the magic trick going on behind the scene. So to do that, just click on your sphere and under the material slot, let's create a brand new material called MM Invisible, and we can double click to open that up. And the easy way to make an invisible material is to set your blend mode to masked, and then set our opacity mask to a value of zero. And you should see that material go invisible here in the material editor. So let's press save, and now our sphere is completely hidden. So now when I go press play, we should get that same simulation, but our sphere is completely invisible. Now our simulation is set up correctly, but we should also add in an explosion. So I have this Niagara particle system set up, which is this nice explosion with particles bouncing and colliding on the ground. To make sure this is all lined up and timed correctly, I'm just gonna drag this Niagara system, which is here in our outliner, and drop it inside of Sequencer. Then to trigger the simulation at the right time, all I'm gonna do is add a new track right here and add in the Niagara component. And then with this selected, I'm gonna add in the Niagara system lifecycle track. And now we have this timeline here in the viewport to determine when this should start and stop. So we can time this up so it's aligned right on frame 32 or 33. And now let's make sure this is also aligned underneath Master Chief's feet. I'm noticing here when I select the Niagara system that I don't see the typical transform gizmo. And one thing that might happen when you're using this workflow is when you stop your simulation, we jump out of selection mode. You can see right now there's no active mode selected. So you might need to manually go back to selection mode, which will add in that transform gizmo. And from here, we can just slide this right underneath Master Chief and we can scrub our sequencer playhead back so we can see that yes, it's exploding right as he passes over on frame 33. And now if I preview our scene by pressing the play button, I can see that explosion is triggered and Master Chief is launched into the air. So now we have Master Chief set up correctly. But if we wanna render this out, we need to make sure we have a camera inside of Sequencer. So to do that, just click on this little camera icon right here to create a brand new camera from our current view. And now we can frame up on Master Chief here. And now to preview our render, Let's go from the default viewport into the cinematic viewport, and then click on perspective view one more time. And instead of looking through the perspective view, let's look through one of our placed cameras. Now, when I go to press play, I'm actually looking through the proper camera and I'm previewing our final render. Then to render this out, just click on your clapperboard icon to launch movie render queue. I'll choose one of our lightning fast render presets, which is a free bonus when you sign up for Unreal Fundamentals, and I'll pick the Playblast QuickTime preset. And I'll press render local. And just like that, we've rendered out our physics. But to wrap this up, I wanna show you a few tricks that you can use to make better cameras that dynamically adjust to your simulation. Let me show you the quick way to set up autofocus and automatic look at tracking so you don't need to animate your camera every single time. To set this up the right way, go to your quick add actors menu and let's add in a basic actor. And I'll drag this right on top of Master Chief's head. Then in the outliner, I'm gonna right click on this actor and let's attach it to Master Chief and we'll attach it to the head bone. And just to be safe, I'm gonna reset the location and rotation so it snaps right to the position of the bone. Let me press F2 and I'll rename this to be autofocus. Then let's select our camera. We'll expand our details panel from here and we need to do two things. First, let's set up autofocus by changing our focus method to tracking. And if I expand this drop down here, let's select the actor to track by clicking on this drop down and typing in autofocus. Now, no matter where we move our camera, Master Chief should stay in focus. And I can make sure this is working by drawing our debug focus plane. You can see that dynamically adjusts no matter where we move in our scene. But if we wanna automatically aim our camera at Master Chief at all times, let's enable look at tracking by expanding the look at tracking settings, turning look at tracking to true, and let's track the same actor by clicking on this dropdown and typing in autofocus. Now this will keep that actor in the very middle of our scene at all times. So if I wanted to rotate this down just slightly, let's expand on our details here and click on the camera component inside our cine camera actor. And inside of here, we can offset our rotation. So setting our pitch to negative four seems like a good start. Now when I scrub back and forth inside a sequencer, I can see that Master Chief is locked in the entire time. And if you wanna smooth out our camera, I'm gonna change the look at tracking interpolation to a value of 16. So if I wanna preview this with physics, let's click on these three dots one more time. And instead of simulating, 
let's just play our selected viewport. Now when I press play, I'll automatically follow Master Chief and it'll stay in focus. And now as I scrub back and forth, I can see that the camera automatically follows Master Chief. Now to take this one step further, we could also translate our camera throughout the shot. So to do this, let's jump to the very first frame and create a new location keyframe. And then we can go to about 60 frames in and let's move this off to the left. And now our camera should translate through the air. And now we can press play and see our camera and physics simulation both working together. And that's the power of Unreal Engine 5, is you have all these different systems working in real time. Then all we need to do is click on that clapperboard icon and now we can render it out using Movie Render Queue. Now a fair warning, the first time you do this, I'm sure you'll go through a couple rounds of trial and error to get this all set up correctly. But once you understand this system, you can do this again and again to make your own simulations and cinematics for any characters in your project. And if you want the shortcut to master Unreal filmmaking in a fraction of the time, then check out my course, Unreal Fundamentals. You'll learn how to build your own film sets, animate your own characters, and make your own action scenes in just 30 minutes a day. Plus, you'll get all of the templates, cheat sheets, and project files I use on my own commercial projects. It's super easy to follow and all designed to make Unreal easy so you can just focus on the fun, creative filmmaking side of Unreal 5. So check it out. It's on sale right now at unrealforvfx.com slash fundamentals or click the link in the description below. Otherwise, subscribe down here for more in-depth Unreal 5 guides and breakdowns just like this. And click the video here to see how I made this Nintendo Switch commercial in just 24 hours using Unreal 5. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.